When I think of typical Route 1 rodents like Rattata, Zigzagoon, or Bidoof in a solo run, I generally think of a meme run or maybe someone desperate for views, but today we're going to take a look at the evolution of Gen 6 Route 1 rodent in a red and blue solo run. Today is Easter and I knew for a while that I wanted to do some sort of bunny Pokemon for the day, and if you thought for a single solitary second that I would even consider La Bunny, then stop it, hang your head in shame, and go get some help. So let's dust off the pre-COVID meme Big Chungus that no one has talked about in years and take a look at why I chose Diggersby. Dig Chungus doesn't have crazy stats at first glance. It's fairly balanced and it's about in the middle of the pack and today I'm going to make a very rare exception and I'm going to simulate an ability in Gen 1. Huge power or as they like to say in Japan Muscle Man doubles the Pokemon's attack stat and while it doesn't exactly double the base attack stat that's what we're going to be doing today. Now it's worth noting that what I'm going to be doing today isn't as strong as the actual ability, but within the confines of Gen 1, we just gotta work with what we got. With this in mind, it's gonna up our stats to these numbers, and the main reason I decided to utilize an ability today was the simple fact that this run wouldn't be near as good without it. Today, we're gonna be using Generation 6 as our base for the learn set, and in my opinion, this is leagues ahead of any other generation. Now, the main thing that you need to know is that this little bunny starts off with Swords Dance, and for today, Diggersby needs only one new move. Bulldoze is a 60 base power 100% accurate ground move and it's going to lower the opponent's speed by one stage and you also start off with this move as well. Gen 1's missing a lot of things but I think a mid-level ground move is something that would fit in very well and I'm going to be excited to use this today. The Gen 6 TM list is just simply too long to list but all you guys need to know is that staples like Mega Punch, Body Slam, Earthquake, and Rock Slide are going to be the key to this run. And before we begin I would like to quickly say that likes and comments they just really help I can't stress that enough now sometimes I ask you guys to like and comment and I promise a reward but today I humbly come to you and say that if you regular viewers could show me as much support as you did on something like Tyranitar then it would just help the channel out a ton seriously the amount of likes we received on that video it was just tremendous and I really appreciate it now if you like solo run content I do this weekly so whether you're someone new maybe you're someone who just never really thinks about that sort of thing or if you're just a returning subscriber like Andy Taker 307 consider hitting the like button scroll down and this week I want to see about 200 comments that just say big chungus it's just the way the good man up above would want it and with that out of the way sit back relax grab yourself a soda pop and let's just get into it Today I did pick Bulbasaur for the rival. I talk about this a lot, but it bears repeating, especially if there's new viewers. Razor Leaf, it never stops being a threat, even at the very end of the game. And even though we get Rock Slide later, it does have sub 100% accuracy, and that can lead to some frustrating Gyarados shenanigans since it will be on the rival's team as well. And I didn't mention the topping in the intro. Diggersby is a normal and ground top. It was a unique top combination until Ursa Luna came out with Legends Arceus, but it's really good. I would say that this is the best top combination that there probably is in a Gen 1 game for a pure physical attacker. If you ask anybody in the know for these kind of games and you ask what's the best physical move, uh, Earthquake would probably be number one and then Body Slam has to be a close second. Rock Slide's good too but the subpar accuracy it doesn't really have a lot of base power but Earthquake and Body Slam both getting stabbed they're gonna be really huge for this run and since we do have Sword Stance and Bulldoze my strategy for this run especially when I was optimizing became to do as minimum battles as possible because we can just kind of boost our attack up to kind of match the level of any competition that we're facing today. And with that said, there is no optional battles in the early game. I go straight to the first mandatory bug catcher and that's the only battle we do. And there's going to be several little early battles where I do have to use some swords dance. Now, on this battle specifically, I could use two or three bulldozers and just get through it fairly quick. But since I do want to avoid healing, it just makes more sense and like an efficient manner of speaking to just use two swords dance one shot it with a bulldoze we have 19 bulldozers left and now we can just take a look at brock And 
the key to getting through this battle is going to be Double Sword Stance once again. It guarantees a two-shot range on both of his Pokemon. Now, even if the Geodude went for Defense Curl like it does here, it's still going to be a two-shot range, so it's pretty comfortable. Now, we end up taking a pretty good bit of damage, and you might be thinking, that's the end of this little bunny we're going to lose, but hold your horses, big dog. Now, it is worth noting that when I take Geodude out, I do get to learn Quick Attack. It's just a better version of Tackle, and since our speed stat isn't the best, it's just going to be a decent move to have. Now, as for Onyx, even though we're really low, I mentioned Bulldoze has an effect, and it comes into key here. Now, we tank whatever move the Onyx is going to throw at us. It goes for Tackle. It gets us pretty low. We fire off a Bulldoze. It does over half health, but it lowers Onyx's speed, and that means we get to go first on the next turn. We take it out, and just like that, Brock is down. Going forward on the next route, I do have to utilize Sword Stance a little bit, and that's mainly because Bug Types, they resist ground, and with only Quick Attack, it just makes fights overall quicker, but we do stick on the minimum track at least until we get into Mount Moon. And the one single optional battle we do today is the Super Nerd. I mention the Super Nerd like every other video, but he's never been easier than he is today. Bulldoze is super effective against his Ball and Magnet, and we can take it out really quick, and that's really all that Diggersby needs, especially when you consider that we do get Mega Punch up here, and even though it's not that accurate, it does a lot of damage. 120 effective power with Stab means that we're going to be hitting really hard, and if we ever have to use Swords Dance, it's just going to be complete obliteration. And at the end of the Mount Moon, the Super Nerds all weak to ground moves, so it's very easy, but the key thing about the optional battle was that it helps us hit level 15. Damage rounding threshold is pretty key here. And I guess I'll mention that you do get to learn Takedown at the end of the fight. I'm going to go on record by saying I think Takedown is one of the worst moves in the game. It's kind of like Submission. It's just an awful move. Never learn it. Mega Punch, as bad as it kind of is, it's not great. It's leagues ahead of Takedown, so I hate Takedown. I'll mention that. Here's some documented proof. And as for rival number two, level 15 put us at that 34 speed threshold, so we outspeed the Pidgeotto. And unfortunately, a Mega Punch can't one-shot it reliably. I think I'm pretty sure you have to crit for this, so I do set up one Swords Dance and just kind of pray that it doesn't use Sand Attack. It does here, and our Mega Punch connects, and that means we're moving on. And since we have the Swords Dance boost, the rest of the fight, it's just clean. It's over with. This is my optimized run, so I really want you guys to know that this is the best I could do, and I want to just shine a spotlight on on how frustrating Mega Punch can be. Watch me fight the Zubat. I miss four Mega Punches in a row. And at that point, you're just sitting there saying, what's the point? I could have just went for Quick Attack, sure. But Mega Punch, it's like 85% accuracy. You figured it would hit most of the time, but to miss four times in a row, it's just frustrating. That's all I'm gonna say about it. And as far as just Nugget Bridge in general and the route to Bill's house, we got it handled. There's nothing too bad. I don't do any extra battles. And you might be wondering, hey, you're a ground type. You're weak to water. Are you going to skip Misty? What's going to happen today? Well, my friends, I think it's time we look at Misty. There's a great strategy for today. And if you guessed that it involves Swords Dance, then give yourself a big old pat on the back. Now, there's two strategies you could do here. The faster way is one Swords Dance into Mega Punch. The slower way is three Swords Dance into Quick Attack for 100% accuracy and to outspeed the Starmie. Here, I just go with the single Swords Dance, Mega Punch takes it out. And as for the Starmie, you just kind of hope it goes for a different move or doesn't crit with a Bubble Beam and you should be okay. And in this footage, it goes for an X Defend. I hit a Mega Punch, but the X Defend means it survives, but we do have Quick Attack, my friends, that extra priority means we can take an extra turn right in a row, knock it out, and that's Misty down just like that. And I guess I'll mention Dig for a second. You, it's a really good move. It's 150 effective power with Stab, but the fact of the matter is that Bulldoze is just better. Dig is a 100 base power two-turn move, and since Bulldoze is a, I don't have to explain basic math to you guys, 60 base power times two is more than two turns for 100 base power. I don't learn Dig today. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I figured maybe somebody would ask, and I figured I should just get ahead of it. Go ahead and just say it. Down on the SS and finally the Holy Grail is awaiting us. It's a stabbed body slam and it's a very welcome addition to the team. And at this point, Diggersby is already going to start coming into its own. So let's just beat up on a couple of major battles here real quick. We'll skim over them. And there's no point covering these two fights individually. All you need to know about rival number three is it's just a series of body slams. They're all one shots. We can just keep it moving on to Lieutenant Surge. And you already know Bulldog super effective. It's going to take everything out. In fact, I like to bring this up a lot, but the Raichu in red and blue can't even
even hurt you if you're a ground type. So this is just trivial. We can kind of keep scooting along to that mid game. We can go past Rock Tunnel. We can pick up straight back in Celadon. And as usual, the first order of business is to take on the Rocket Hideout. I am picking up the high money items. I'm doing the usual stuff. I'm doing the bare minimum. And as for Giovanni, it kind of highlights a problem with Diggersby. There's going to be lots of fights where you just have to take a turn to set up a swords dance. And you can see here I get hit with a bind. It takes extra turns. On the Kangaskhan, I get hit with a Comet Punch. It takes even more turns. And you just have to set up just a little bit and endure some turns just to be able to hit your one shot ranges. And it just adds a little bit of time to the totality of the run. But it's really not that big of a deal. But just like I mentioned in some of the other cross gen runs, it's these little details that kind of add up to hold these Pokemon back from being like really elite. When that's over, I really push Diggersby to its limits, and I'm heading straight to Erica. We're weak to ground. She has a 100% critical razor leaf. Let's see how this one goes. And I guess today's run is brought to you by the fact that Swords Dance is just a really powerful move to have early. There's lots of win conditions here. You can tank a Razor Leaf straight up and not die, but you do need to set up once. It can also miss Sleep Powder like it does here. And once that happens, the fight's pretty much over. The single Swords Dance setup allows me to pretty much clean sweep this entire team. I did go for quick attacks on the Tangela just because it's pathetic anyway. And I wasn't convinced that Body Slam wouldn't Gen 1 miss or maybe miss the range or something somehow so I just went quick attack there just so I had, knew I had enough body slams for the real threat which would be the vile plume later. Tangela is the worst Pokemon. Don't comment about Tangela below because I hate it. And just like that, without doing any extra battles outside of one, has already dominated pretty much the toughest battles that it's going to face in the entire run. It was pretty impressive. The stab body slam, the bulldoze is pretty good, the sword stance, it all adds up to let this thing get by our normally tough battles if something else with its typing was in the same position. But after that, we can take a quick break. We can do our one Celadon buy. And the key things to note here is picking up Rock Slide on the very top floor from the little girl by giving her a Sodi Pop. And as for the vitamins today, I am able to scrounge up enough money to be able to afford three proteins and three carbos. And that'll set us up nicely for the rest of the run. Now skipping ahead to rival number four in Pokemon Tower, Rock Slide is key here because there is a Gyarados on the team. But don't overlook Big Chungus just yet. Here, I'm going to be missing the Rock Slide and I'm going to take a Hydro Pump directly to the face. But see how kind of tanky we are? Now granted, this fight is a lot lower level, but we tank it well considering we're weak to it. I knock it out on the next turn, but it's just, even though we're over leveled, it's not that impressive, but it is pretty cool to see. We cruise through this fight, and we can also skip over the rest of Pokemon Tower, because Bulldoze makes really light work of all the ghost types. When that's over with, I do pick up the final HMs of the run down in the Safari Zone, and just like most of these elite runs do, I am going to go to Sylph Cove first, and that means on the 10th floor is the Holy Grail for ground types, probably the best physical move in the game. 100 base power Earthquake is just waiting there. We already have Body Slam, we already have Rock Slide, we already have Sword Stance, so this pretty much completes. This makes Diggersby into its final form, and we do the bare minimum. I think now we can take a look at rival number five. And there's always the conundrum here. Sand Attack is on the Pidgeot, so you don't know if you actually want to set up. But here, I just throw caution to the wind. I find myself more in these runs just being like, eh, if I get hit with a Sand Attack, I can just push through it. You don't want to see it, but I'm not mad anymore if it hits me. I set up once, check it out with a Rock Slide. And on the Gyarados, we almost get a repeat. I miss Rock Slide, but luckily it misses Hydro Pump. I kind of would want to see how much it would hit us for, but I'm glad we didn't get to see it. I knock it out in the next turn. And from there, pretty much the main players are already out of the fight. Alakazam does outspeed, but it just goes for recover. But I fat finger another sword stance. It wasn't needed. I didn't need to do this, but whatever. It, I don't get punished for it. I take it out on the next turn. And we were already pretty safe on the Venusaur with plus two attack. But now that we have plus four, I can easily one shot it with a neutral earthquake. And Big Chungus looking pretty impressive on what's usually one of the tougher fights in the game. And when I finally wrap up Sylph, 
I'm gonna be doing like a newer strategy. I don't really fear Sabrina, especially if she can't one-shot you, so I'm just gonna head straight up there. Alakazam is always a scary late game Pokemon, but what you gotta remember in red and blue is that it doesn't actually have Psychic yet, so it's not really that much of a threat. Unless you're a really frail Pokemon, you just don't have that much to fear. Now, we can look at this fight real quick. I don't even have to set up because after we get through Seal, the Carbos that I picked up, the routing that I did, I'm at 91 speed, which means I outspeed everything but the Alakazam. I don't even need to set up. I take everything out fairly quick. The Alakazam just kind of goes for a recover, and just like that, Sabrina, one of the easier battles in the game. I know it can be scary if you're weak to psychic types, but out of all the psychic trainers in the game, the late game Alakazams you're going to see, Sabrina by far is the weakest one. Now we can take this party down to Uncle Koga, and we're a ground type. You already know that it's really bad news for him, and we can just easily get through that. And there's just going to be a few more things we need to wrap up before we get to that end game. But first, it's time for the most brisk swim down to Cinnabar. Our little bunny ear hand things are just kind of flopping in the wind. We don't do any extra battles. And after we ponder the age-old question of if Tombstoner, brother, is actually the 28th TM or not, we can just quickly mow through Blaine. Even though we have Swords Dance, we've talked about this in a couple of runs that have boosting moves. We don't even need it here. And that just shows you how easy it is. We take the badge. We can move on. And that means only the final badge is left. And we got red and blue Giovanni coming up. Now, I do set up one Swords Dance just to help out the ranges a little bit here. And it's just a route. I do have to be a little bit cautious of my PP because I had to use an elixir going into Blaine because I forgot to heal. And here, I don't want to have to use another one. So I do have to utilize Body Slam at least once. But it's not a big deal. That's all the badges down. And we can just keep it going straight into rival number six. And looking at this fight, I repeat stuff in my videos. It's because there's always new viewers coming in. So if you don't like hearing the same thing, I don't know what to tell you. The main thing to know about this fight is the Pidgeot no longer has Sand Attack. So if you're kind of tanky, you can just kind of set up if you need to at your own impunity. It doesn't matter if you're running like a run that needs like six setups. But here we only need times two. We move on to the Rhyhorn. And you do need at least two Earthquakes for this fight. You need one for the Rhyhorn or it's going to linger around for two or three turns. It's not very pleasant. It wastes a lot of time. And as for the Gyarados, if we don't miss our Rock Slide, we take it out. And luckily, we don't miss. That means we can take a look at this Growlithe. We can say hello and goodbye to him instantly. And I could have set up an extra time, maybe outsped the Alakazam. But the fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter. It could crit you, but I mean, when you're trying to compete with the top runs, like you kind of got to roll the dice a little bit. You can't be you can't be scared of getting crit. We take it out. We move on to the Venusaur. The plus two is pretty key here. It means that the neutral 150 effective power of Earthquake will take it down like the dog that it is in one hit. And just like that, we're through rival number six. We got the Elite Four ahead of us. Looking at Victory Road, I'm gonna be skipping the rare candy here, and we just don't need it. I say that a lot, but let me kind of elaborate a little bit on this 11th rare candy, especially when we're looking at the medium fast leveling group. Now this doesn't all apply to Diggersby. This is just like my experience through this leveling group. A lot of times it hurts you more than it helps you. If you're speeding to the end of the game, you, know, you try to use your rare candies the best you can. Oftentimes you'll just level up at the worst possible moment in like some of your hardest fights. So I don't get it today, it puts our experience Experience just at a bad range. I couldn't fit it in anywhere to make it make sense to waste the time and have a worse fight as a result of it. Maybe that makes sense, but we're skipping it today. And we're also weak to ice. This often creeps up on you, especially in a blind playthrough. You, there's no ice damage in red and blue, and all of a sudden you find yourself at Lorelai's doorstep. You're weak to ice. She absolutely blasts your ass. And when you're optimizing like I am for this kind of run here, you pretty much got to revolve the whole game around being able to beat Lorelai pretty consistently. Consistently. Now, I don't know if I got this consistent, but I will tell you this. I did use all of my rare candies, but one that puts us at level 56. And now let's just see how it goes. Dugong is up first, and very similar kind of to Rayquaza. Now granted, we're not that tanky. I just don't care if it uses the Aurora Beam. What I do care about is the attack drop, because I specifically, I very much need plus four on my attack to make this fight pretty easy. Now luckily, we tank an Aurora Beam. You can see that it's not that bad, and we get the turn two rest, which means we don't take even more chip damage. And when this one's all wrapped up, I'm at plus four attack. I take it out in one rock slide, and now we can move on to the Cloister. I get unlucky here, I crit. And if you didn't know, when you 
crit, you pretty much ignore all the stat boost, so it doesn't knock it out in one hit. That means it survives, but it does trigger a retroactive super potion, which means I get another turn and we take it out. Now, for the rest of this fight, it's a sweep. I'm already set up, there's nothing she can do, but I would like to talk about this. Uh, I just think it's interesting. A super effective non-stab rock slide does the same damage as a stabbed earthquake. Now, just for consistency's sake, it would be a little bit easier, more consistent to use earthquake right here, but I do want to save all my earthquakes because I have been using elixirs throughout the run. I only have a couple left, so I am just trying to save some PP, be a little bit more efficient, but Lorelai's down. It's not too bad. Diggersby looking pretty good. Next up is Hiker Anthony, and if you're confused by why it's not Bruno, you're new to the channel, we just we just have a little goof and a little gaff with Bruno sometimes, and he's taking a little break because we beat him so much. Uh, anyway, we do have to set up here just to make the ranges a little better. You wouldn't want to get hit by like a, a massive counter when a body slam doesn't knock out the Hitmonchan, and you do want to save some earthquakes for Agatha, but overall, maybe Bruno will be back for the next cross-gen run. I don't know yet. Now, oh, Chungus here has been impressive. When we're looking at Agatha, the main thing that stood out to me when I was finally optimizing this run is that I actually just straight up outspeed the Gengars here, so it's not really that much of a challenge. I don't need to set up. The only thing that's kind of worrisome is that it's not a 100% guaranteed to knock out the Golbat out of all the things in this fight, and it does confuse me, so that means that the early game gets a little muddy. I start hurting myself. I'm wondering if I'm going to get put to sleep, and this is how it ends, but at the end of the day, I snap out of it. We get off some Earthquake. We're moving on. We still got that zero up in the reset column. I'm feeling pretty good. Next up is Lance, and this little Diggersby Knight has already slain the Gyarados Dragon multiple times, so how's it gonna go today? And here, since Rockslide doesn't get stabbed, you can't just straight up one-shot it. You either need to go two Body Slams, two Rock Slides, or Swords Dance into a Body Slam. I set up the Swords Dance, and finally, our little Easter Bunny here, our luck runs out. We get hit with a critical hit Hydro Pump, and that's our first reset of the run. On the second attempt, I just crit with a Body Slam, and it's out of there. Now, I do want to go the more consistent route. Now, outside of the crit, two body slams is probably just better because you also have that 33% chance to paralyze it. It could skip its turn. It could miss the hydro pump. There's a lot of things that could go right, so we just take it out. We do level up after that, and you do want to set up one swords dance on the first dragon there. It gives you some extra speed. It eliminates any chance of like a aerodactyl shenanigan, like a critical hit hyper beam or something like that. And overall, we get past this one fairly easily. Easy. Pidgeot is up first. There's not much to worry about. Maybe if you're not paying attention and it mirror moves Swords Dance a couple of times and maybe gets off a big sky attack, you could be in trouble. But overall, the main goal for this part of the run is plus four on our attack before we move on. This mainly puts everything in a, just a pretty good range. We outspeed the Alakazam. The plus four means we can just take out the Rhydon with a single Earthquake. And an unintended side effect of having plus four means that we don't have to go for the less accurate Rock Slide and instead we can just one shot Gyarados with the body slam and pretty much eliminate any possibility of a crit uh, hydro pump hitting us again for another reset. Next up is the thickest little puppy in all of Kanto. We're boosted. You might want to avert your eyes because this earthquake is gonna, I don't even want to describe it. And at the end, this plus four was for one reason and one reason alone. That's because I am not taking a single razor leaf this entire run from the Venusaur at least and we can one shot it and that's the battle over. And that's it, Diggersby has done it. With a final time of two hours, 17 minutes, and 42 seconds. It's not the best run we've done, but it's not the worst run either. There's a couple of worst, Tinkaton and Iron Thorns come to mind. And that's pretty impressive. Now I guess there should be probably an asterisk by this because this is huge power Diggersby. We bent the rules a little bit, we used an ability today. Don't get mad at me in the comment section. It is what it is. And I think if you look back, the totality of this run, what kind of held this thing back from maybe shaving off 
off three, four, five minutes and being really high up there is Swords Dance. While it's great, the fact that you have to start setting up really early just means you're taking a lot of extra turns. And I guess probably throughout the course of the run, that's probably what cost it that little amount of time. Now 217, one reset, that would be worthy of like A plus tier if we were looking at it. I still don't have a cross gen tier list. I'll get that to you soon. That just kind of takes a little bit of work on the back end, just some extra stuff. And right now I'm really motivated just to create content, create, create, create. And I just haven't got to it. That's about all there is to say about it. But it was a fun run, a nice little Easter run. I really am partial to Diggersby. I have seen some like magazines rate this as the ugliest Pokemon out of every single Pokemon that exists. But I'm really partial to it mainly because I play Pokemon Go PvP a lot and I have like a rank three XL Diggersby and it's put in some work. It's a really good Pokemon in the, the low level 1500 Great League. But we're getting off on a tangent. I'm just going to stop there. We're going to end it there. As usual, special shout out to my channel members. I really do appreciate the support. You guys mean a lot to me. You know who you are. And outside of that, if you're hearing my voice right now, you're amazing. I love people who make it this far in the video. Uh, if you're not subscribed for whatever reason, I stopped asking at the first of the video because it seems a little, I don't know, needy, I guess. But I ask now so that if somebody makes it this far and you're not subscribed, uh, maybe consider subscribing. I want to grow. Uh, everybody wants to get views. Everybody wants to grow their channel. But for me, I want to have like this really strong core audience. I want people that actually stick around and watch everything. I don't want just cheap subscribers, people who just click on the video for one minute and click off. I'm looking for like real tangible, meaty data, I guess. But what am I talking about? I don't know. And I don't know if we're going to do, we'll probably do at least one more cross-gen run. I got a couple of things I need to wrap up in May. Also got to get in a couple of Gen 2 runs because I got big summer plans. Maybe I'll fill you in on exactly what those are, but I really don't know yet. But I've been grinding these videos out. Hopefully we keep up this weekly release schedule going for as long as I can because if you didn't know, I'm really busy. I'm going to be going for like almost two weeks on a honeymoon. And then I'm going back for another bachelor's degree starting in August and I work another job. So your boy might be a little bit busy is all I'm saying, but I'm working my ass off to try to keep up this content and I'm not going to keep babbling because that's what I'm doing right now. The video is longer. People don't even make it this far anyway, but I do appreciate you if you do. But that's about it for me. I will see you on the next video. Bye.